Hi everyone, JJ here with The Art of Value. Welcome. Well, Chris Mayer, author of the excellent investing book, 100 Baggers and a Fund Manager, recently gave a long interview about serial acquirer companies, including Constellation Software, on their Millennial Investing Podcast, and I'll put a link to that in the description. But I have looked at what he said specifically about Constellation Software. So I'm going to look at that today and give my thoughts on it. So let's get straight into it. The interviewer asked Chris, what got you interested in the serial acquirer's business model in the first place? And he answers, it's a good question and I wish I knew more definitively. It's sort of in the mist of time a little bit, but I do know that it started with Constellation Software. I remember being skeptical of Constellation Software for years and years, just kind of thinking, how's this possible? How can this company acquire so many other businesses? I remember thinking, well, there must be a lot of junky businesses and low terminal value and just being totally skeptical about it. But then one day I just sat down and I read Mark Leonard's letters. And if you don't know who Mark Leonard is, he's the founder of Constellation Software. He's been there for a long time and I think one of the best capital allocators in the world. Well, he's proven to be so since the beginning of Constellation Software. And I just started to dig into it and figure it out and it sort of clicked how this can work. You know, there's some parts of the Constellation formula that other serial acquirers also follow but there's this decentralized model, how they run their business. So it's not like you have one guy in headquarters who's buying hundreds of businesses. It's not all up to Mark Leonard to do it. He has other people there and there's a formula to it. He explains this. In Constellation's case, it's almost like you have six different divisions all looking to acquire businesses. And then even within those divisions, there's subdivisions that are able to do their own acquisitions. And there's a certain discipline to it, a formula to it. In Constellation's case, they're acquiring the same kind of businesses over and over. And so they have a way of creating a box, a formula of what they're looking for and just reapply it again and again. So when that started to click and I saw that it worked, I started to see kinds of patterns in other serial acquirers as well. So yeah, that's how I got interested and it just broadened from there. Chris says Constellation is a great example of bringing best practices to companies they acquire. There's a certain playbook that they have and one part of that is simply increasing prices or what they call value-based pricing. They don't spend a lot of money improving a product unless the customer is willing to pay for that or it's just a simple matter of making sure they get paid for the work they put in. He observes, I don't think there are too many that do this where they're actively taking on a turnaround. I guess Constellation is good at that and they're buying companies that are sometimes not necessarily performing that well and they come in and improve it. But for a lot of the other industrial serial acquirers, they're not doing that. And I think they've learned how difficult it is to do the turnarounds. Like Buffett says, Warren Buffett, most turnarounds don't turn. That's the problem. A lot of investors do tend to go into companies, buy stocks in companies that they are trying to turn the company around and often it doesn't work. That's what Buffett observed there, that turnarounds, the stock might be cheap because they're going in with new management or whatever it is. They're trying to turn the company around and they're rare. More often than not, the company doesn't turn around. So it's kind of a value trap. But he's saying their constellation is good at doing that, which is pretty rare. And other serial acquirers have tried that and discovered that they can't do it in the industrial sectors. Constellation, of course, isn't in the industrial sectors. They're in software. They buy small software companies, increasingly larger software companies. We'll look at that. He talks about that as well. But it's difficult to do in other sectors and in software too, really. So Constellation is good at doing that. And that's rare. Now, if you're getting value out of this episode so far, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button to help spread it to more people, whether you're watching on YouTube, or on X, on Rumble, or indeed on Patreon. Thanks. Now, on the sustained growth of Constellation Software, because it is a large cap now, it's getting to be a very big company after more than 20 years. The interviewer asks, are some of the larger serial acquirers like Constellation Software 
going to be able to sustain their high returns on capital while doing deals in say the sub 700 million dollar range and remember that constellation software often has bought companies in the low millions and now they're getting bigger to move the needle they have to buy things that are bigger well they don't have to but they have to buy a, a huge number of small software companies to make it work it's like Berkshire Hathaway is so big now that they have to buy big companies it's a smaller pool of companies that they can invest in to actually move the needle Apple being one it was a, about a 30 billion dollar investment in Apple that Buffett made back when it was relatively inexpensive but Constellation's not that big but they still have to probably buy bigger companies and they're doing that Chris says yeah I think this is the big concern with serial acquirers as they scale it gets more challenging and like some of the Swedish serial acquirers as they got bigger they just did bigger deals it's not necessarily that they did more deals it's just that they did bigger deals he goes on but you do see a certain fade over time as you get larger the return on invested capital starts to tail off as you would expect but you can still create a lot of value constellation started at 30 to 35 percent return on invested capital which is really high it's got a lot of room to come down and still create value so they could come down into the 20s and it could still be very good it's very high it's great that they've sustained a high return on invested capital for so long investing back into the business that's what creates the growth the compounding over a long period of time good to look for businesses that have sustained return on invested capital high return on invested capital return on capital employed as i've talked about before over a long term that's what to look for that's what can create these 100 baggers or high multi baggers over time Chris says they're putting large amounts of capital to work so it's both things that you want returns and the amount of capital that you can put to work so making a lot of money and then reinvesting it over and over again that's how compounding happens and in his book 100 bags that's what he talks about the twin engines of growth lots of revenue and then reinvesting that and being able to reinvest that at high rates of return just because they're investing it doesn't mean it's going to be a good investment and Mark Leonard has been expert excellent at capital allocation and reinvesting at a high rate over the long term with this serial acquirer model now here he talks more about the future of constellation software how can it grow it's a large cap at the moment could it grow into a mega cap like berkshire hathaway how's it going to do that from here is it going to do it by buying small software companies continuing to do that or get bigger and bigger by buying bigger companies this is what chris has to say but yeah constellation is a really interesting case and i own it and it's always the question when i talk to other shareholders it's the thing we talk about what does constellation 2.0 sort of look like how can they continue to do what they're doing how sustainable is it what does it look like and he talks about what they're doing to move into this new phase of growth right now i think we're getting a peek at it i mean they did the deal where they bought Blue Optima from Black Knight, which was an incredibly good deal for them. And before that, they did the All Scripts deal, which was a very large deal. The jury's still out on how exactly that deal is coming out, but it remains to be seen with Constellation whether they can continue to do it or not. So they've made a few bigger deals. Can they do bigger and bigger ones? Can Mark Leonard take the company to a new level like Berkshire Hathaway doing big deals over time? There were some smaller companies in Berkshire Hathaway's history. Seas Candy is a famous one where it's bought for millions and then they've made billions from it. Can this happen with Constellation Software? And Mark Leonard will be very conscious of that. And he's getting older too. But then Munger and Buffett also lived a long time. Buffett's still alive, of course. I'm just saying in the past tense because Charlie Munger just passed away recently, sadly. But he was 99. So if Mark Leonard goes for that long he could retire but these people don't tend to retire these capital allocators they don't tend to retire they just keep going on so we'll have to see what happens now i've recently started the art of value patreon community for just the price of a cup of coffee each month i'll be making exclusive bonus videos ad free videos about the stocks i own the stocks i'm looking at the stocks i'm researching thoughts on the market all kinds of things so go and check it out have a look and i'll see you over there i'll put a link in the description chris also notes that they're still doing some of the smallest acquisitions too so it's funny to have a company of that market cap 
and they're still doing these tiny, tiny deals based on research that I've done and I've talked to people in that business. They have 100,000 plus targets that they track. Not all of those are actionable, of course. So 100,000 software companies just in that niche that they can still buy. So there's still a lot of room for growth and they do have competition from other serial acquirers who are copying their model. But, you know, if you're going to sell to Constellation Software or someone else. Chris says, and there's more copycats and everything, but there still seems to be a lot of opportunity and we just have to wait and see. But this is the big concern with serial acquirers. Once they get that big, it gets harder and harder to find ways to deploy capital, larger and larger sums, but it can be done. He does mention this role model, the serial acquirer of Berkshire Hathaway, and it is that. I remember people talking about Berkshire Hathaway and how it was too big 30 years ago or so, and it still had a lot of legs left. Constellation's tiny compared to that. They're among the best corporate capital allocators on the planet. So if you wanted to pick someone to solve that problem, you would pick them, I think. So I feel good that they're going to figure it out. We'll see. That's a big statement there saying some of the best capital allocators on the planet will have proven that over the last couple of decades. People were skeptical over time about whether they could do this could just keep buying software companies because, you know, we think of Peter Lynch's diversification where companies buy too many other companies and it's really hard to make them work as a group. But the serial acquirer model is just doing that over and over again. But buying right, buying quality companies is the key and Constellation Software has been able to do that. Chris Mayer talked about how you're skeptical that there must be some trash companies in there, but Constellation has been able to make it work for over time. What do you think about what Chris May has said here? Do you think Constellation Software will be able to go on to be a much bigger company, even though it's a large cap now? Do you think they'll be able to sustain the growth that they have over the last two decades? Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to put a video here to a previous Constellation Software episode. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link in the description as well. And here I'm going to put a link to what YouTube thinks that you should watch next. And everybody, thanks for watching or listening, and I'll see you in the next one.